Hey, I figured out a good way to produce vlogs, edit vlogs on the go from my iPad Pro. This is the new 2017 12.9 inch model. And I'm used to using Premiere Pro, which is full featured, does everything. Luma Fusion seems to do a really good job. And I can do the complete workflow, ingesting the footage to actually publishing it to YouTube. First, you gotta get your footage onto the iPad. And so I've been using this little SD card dongle thing and you just stick your SD card in there and then import it into the camera roll on the iPad and then once it's on the camera roll you can fire up Luma Fusion and down here on this little board here is where you'll bring your footage into it so because it's in the camera roll it's under photos and then I can go under albums and you'll see all the recent stuff that you might have imported. You can see when you have imported a particular clip it will show up with a check mark, so I know I've already used that clip. If I want to drag something new in, I can just select it here and it'll play it here. And so now I can scrub through that particular clip, set mark in and out points for it, and then just drop it to the timeline with that. So now it appears right here in the timeline. By the way, you can quickly undo and redo things. This is the undo button there, and that undoes it. My favorite thing about LumaFusion is that it never seems to hesitate. It's so fast and so smooth. It seems faster and smoother than my overclocked top-end desktop with 64 gigs of RAM and super fast M2 SSDs. I've totally decked it out, but it cannot keep up with this iPad for whatever reason. Maybe it's awesome code or whatever, but as I play back the footage, there's no stuttering. It doesn't matter if I do overlays or transitions. Look here, I have all these titles and transitions built in an extra music layer. Man, when I do this stuff on any laptop, even a top-end laptop, it seems to really lag and it burns through the batteries really quick. By the way, speaking of batteries, this thing has lasted me through several hours of editing, like even maybe three or four hours of editing like this. But because it's USB powered, I can charge it from a USB battery charger or just about anywhere. So back to bringing footage in. Of course, you can pull in photos that you've directly imported or anything you've captured with the device if you do that. You can also use the Apple AirPlay to send footage from your iPhone if that's a, if you if you capture footage with that or you could use the Wi-Fi app on your camera to transfer it over however you get the footage over. Uh, another way to do it is to go to the imported sources here and here you can add in a variety of different network sources. So I'm selecting import media here. And you can see I can pull in footage from Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, or OneDrive. So these different cloud services, if, if you're working as part of a team, for example, my cameraman Justin, who's over my shoulder here, he could grab footage um, on his desktop or his laptop or wherever and throw it onto Google Drive, and then I could import it here. The one source that it's missing that I really wish it had is local network shares, because we have a network attached storage, a Synology NAS here on the local area network, where we keep all of our master files and it, it right now Lumia Luma Fusion can't talk to that however because it could talk to Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive and the NAS can also synchronize with those things what I did was I synchronized the NAS to Google Drive so my current vlog folder exists on both Google Drive and the NAS and is continuously synchronized so I can just grab my footage directly from Google Drive and you see if I scroll down here this is my Google Drive on the internet and go down to the folder I have it in, which is videos new, and then say GH5, and you can see all my clips are right here. If I save any new clips here, it automatically goes, it goes to Google Drive, and then that automatically gets sent to my NAS. So I have this extra backup. Uh, other people on the team can access everything at LAN speeds. Inserting clips and trimming them is as easy as that, as are things like adding transitions. So I can go down here and select transitions, for example, with the cross dissolve, I could drag it up here. And now we have an instant cross dissolve and making adjustments like extending the transition. I can just select it and then hit the trash can here and it goes away. You can easily do slip cuts or ripple edits or whatever. So you can see I can make that longer or shorter. And of course, undoing is super easy because I undo a lot of stuff. You can have up to three video and three audio tracks. So let me see, I have some music over here. You can see I can independently adjust the volume of the different tracks. The pencil doesn't really add much. You can just use your finger. Um, but I have this second track up here separated and the volume cranked a little bit. They make it really simple. 
if you want to separate the audio and video tracks. So for simplicity, by default, the audio is linked directly to the video track. But if I just triple tap this, it'll separate those things out. So now I have a separate audio clip that I can work with completely independently. And that makes it really easy to do J and L cuts, for example. Of course, there are titles built into it, a wide range of titles. Some of these templates that they include are pretty cheesy, but that's cool because you can add your own in and it's really not that big of a deal. So for example, I can just grab this and bring it up here. And well, okay, that's a very holiday themed title, but no worries if it's terrible, I can just go in and select it and then edit it. I can go in and say whatever. I do use the keyboard regularly with it in landscape mode and, and that works great. It doesn't have as many keyboard shortcuts as I would like, but there are most of the basic keyboard shortcuts are there. And the Luma Fusion people say that there's going to be an update soon that will add more keyboard shortcuts in. So your titles are in there. They can be animated with keyframes and such. Um, pretty much that's going to be enough to, to get the job done for you. They include some royalty free music. So you see there's not a lot of songs. What is there? Maybe like 40 songs here, but they do include some songs that you can easily bring in like suspense trailer. You can preview it. Trim it and then easily just bring it right onto your timeline. And with a song, of course, you can do things like uh, cross dissolve it, fade it in and out, as well as using keyframes to carefully control the volume of it so that, you know, if you're fading it in with the voiceover, you're not going to blow it out. Something I found handy is the ability to add voiceovers in. So there was a part where I just wanted to voice something over. I can hit this plus sign here and then just do voiceover. It could pull it in from a different recording app or it will record directly from either the built-in mic on the iPad or the mic on my headphones. So I just use the mic on my headphones and it actually sounded okay. It wasn't like great, but it was good enough, right? When you're done with the editing, you can go up here to the little share export thing and export the project. Um, or you can make a project archive, which is a file that optionally includes all the original video files. You can save that on Google Drive as a backup. You can then reopen this in LumaFusion for, for later editing. So you do have the ability to export these, archive them, and then re-edit them later. The one big weakness that I found with the share is that currently you cannot export a project to a bigger editing app like Premiere Pro. Um, so when you start editing in here, you're going to have to finish it up unless you just want to export the first half and then pick up uh, as, a, as a video file and then pick up the rest there. But you can't go in and edit the separate layers in any other app. But they say that they're working on that. So as you can see, I really like it. I'm happy with it enough that I wanted to recommend it. I don't have any relationship with LumaFusion. I just threw down the 20 bucks or whatever it is and got it myself. That's another thing. It's way cheaper than using something like Premiere Pro, which requires, you know, basically 50 bucks a month per team member here. It's just 20 bucks for the device and it works really well. It also works equally well on the iPhone, but of course your screen is smaller and I definitely appreciate having the big amount of screen space. Um, some notable things that it's missing that I would love to see are things like warp stabilizer in Premiere that we'll use to steady out shaky footage. It can't do that. Um, but you can just use one of a dozen other iOS apps that will take a piece of footage and stabilize it and then resave it. So you could run it through a different app before importing it in if you happen to have shaky footage. The audio tools are real basic. You can control levels and such, but if you wanted to say cut down uh, annoying noise in the background, something I do in Adobe Audition, you, you just can't do that there. Again, there, there are probably third party iOS apps that would allow you to process it like that. You know, there's no compressors or anything built in. So the audio is, is pretty basic, but for things like vlogging, that's, that's probably okay for most people. Um, it doesn't currently support LUTs, so you can't be using your S log, <laughs> but, uh, they expect to add that again in a future version. So we're looking forward to that. This, I think this app just came out for the first time in December, so it's still really new. Um, I also, I don't think I've seen a way to split left and right channels into two mono channels. I think it will just treat them as stereo that we, we frequently will record Chelsea's channel on the left and my channel on the right and then split it into two mono channels. But at the same time, I haven't tried that. So maybe you have tried it and you've figured out a trick 
to process those as two mono channels. I just haven't found that. Um, if you have any questions for me, if you want to find out if you actually like it or not, uh, let me know. Otherwise, um, check it out and happy mobile editing and vlogging. Subscribe for more tutorials as well to see our actual vlogs. Bye.